Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe and he has created us and he has got a system in place. The more we follow the system, the more we will see barakat, the more we will see blessings. The better it will be for us in dunya and akhirat. Nabi alayhi salatu salam used to make dua, Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balikna ramadhan. Give us barakah. Barakah, forget dunya, but even in deen, that in this little short span of time, let us do maximum amount of a'mal. When a person capitalizes on these two months, then when Ramadan comes in, he's already on the runway like the aeroplane that needs its speed to get that takeoff. Likewise, Ramadan starts, a person takes off now. Now when he's in the heaven, he needs to get to the correct altitude. Then Laylatul Qadr, the last 10 nights of Ramadan comes where a person exerts himself even more, whether they need to take off, whether they spend the whole night in Ibadat, etc. But a person exerts themselves. And this is only a benefit for the believer because 1,000 months of Ibadat for one night, it's, it's uncomparable, it's not fathomable, it's not possible. How can a person do so little amal but get so much reward? So it's for those people who value, like somebody, a worker, an employee that's working all the time, the boss throws in extra benefits that he cannot believe it. Man arafa qadr al-layl, arafa laylat al-qadr. Whoever knows the value of the night will know the value of the great night, Laylat al-Qadr. But a person who doesn't know the value of the night and they're not spending their normal nights properly, they will not know the value of Laylat al-Qadr. Like a person who's making dua all the time, half an hour, one hour dua, they go for Hajj. Now their dua is different compared to a person who normally doesn't make dua, they don't spend time making dua, etc. So it's a build up. Deen is, is a combination, a correlation of amal, it's a build up of amal. So when a person now builds up this amal, then they can maximize on this amal. So we should ask ourselves a question. If there is a build up of amal and my amal, which I am doing is for my Allah, then I'll be ready to die. Am I ready to die? Somebody went to interview a few people, everybody said a different answer. Uh, if you had to die tomorrow, what will you do? Uh, somebody said, I will spend time with my family, I will spend time with my children, I will make a khidma of my parents, I will do A, B, C, D, E. One person said, I won't do anything. So they asked him why. He said, because there's nothing I can do differently in my life. There's nothing that I need to add extra in my life. So a believer, whoever becomes Allah's, Allah is theirs. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet that person. So dunya is Darul Imtihan, we're in an exam room now. But in exam room, that's preparing you for a greater exam. So we see, we have prep exams, teachers, schools, universities, madrasas, have preparatory exams, tests to see. The students are on the standard to take them to another level. This is a preparation for greater preparation. So if we think back in our schooling days, madrasa days, etc. Uh, there were different students, category probably five types of students and primarily two factors. Those that were brilliant and those that were hardworking. The beauty part about Dean is got nothing to do with any potential. Not your wealth, not your uh, IQ, nothing. It's got to do with tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first type of student is very hardworking and they're brilliant. They're the 6A, 8A, 9A students. Second one is who is very hardworking and average to above average. So they get some of the A's. Then you get a student who's brilliant but very lazy. He'll pass, he'll get good marks. Maybe A's, maybe not. Then there's other student who's not brilliant but hardworking. He'll be an average student. And there's another student who's just lazy and doesn't care and has got no interest. He's there for the sake of formalities. He's the one that's always failing or just passing. So I need to see, am I or do I have a desire, a jazba to be from that 6A, 8A, 9A? That student, even if from 100 they get 99, it stresses them out. The same student is the student in the day of the exam, they come, they relax, they're not worried, they got no stress. 
after the paper, they don't have any stress. Their stress will only be losing one or two marks. For everybody else, it's just passing or making the grade. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْآلَىٰ On the day of Qiyamah, there will be those people when everybody will be stressed about Judgment Day and the torments of Qiyamah and drowning in their perspiration, there will be a group of people who will be the VIP people of Allah. They will be reclining, relaxing under the shade of Allah in the VIP booth. Pull Sirat Al-Cross or the blink of an eye. When it comes to Hisab Kitab, Allah will say, forget, you don't need Hisab Kitab. You just need to go straight to Jannah. Go to Jannah, straight to Jannah. Do not pass any of these stages. And then for them, will be Jannah to fear those. Such a Jannah which Allah subhanahu wa prepared with His own hands. So Jannah has 100 stages, between each stage 500 years distance. The first stage of Jannah will be the last person to go into Jannah. We will have a Jannah 10 times the size of this earth. For him just to view his Jannah will take him a thousand years. That's stage one, what's about stage 20, 50, 100, what about Jannah to fear those? So we need to be checking ourselves all the time. Am I fitting that criteria? Am I on the category? Where can I categorize myself on? Where am I? What level am I on? We need to be checking ourselves. Not just that student that's just there for the sake. He's a student in Madrasa, he's studying. He needs to be reminded. He doesn't do his homework on time. The study needs to be punishing him, etc. No. But there's some students that are the favorites. Even if they do wrong, the Ustaz overlooks it. Because it wasn't a mistake, it wasn't intentional. So we need to check all our amal. And then the barakat of dunya and akhirat. Let's look at our salat. What kind of salat am I reading? When, when it came to salat about, about the munafiqeen, they used to read salat. But what kind of salat? Wa la salat illa um kusala. They should come to the masjid, read salat, but they were lazy. They were just lax, just for the sake of doing it. They should read salat, but just for a roll call, for showing, just to show my face. Everybody knows that I read my salat. They should even make dhikr. They should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They should make dhikr, but little bit dhikr. فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Destruction be on those people who read Salat, but they're negligent. So a person is reading Salat, but Allah is saying, destruction be upon him. إِذَا أَحْسَنَ الرَّجُلَ الصَّلَاةِ When a person reads Salat properly, then the Salat makes dua for him. حَفِذَكَ اللَّهُ كَمَا حَفِذْتَنِي How you protected me, may Allah protect you. So that Salat is making a dua for him. وَإِذَا سَعَى أَنِي رِي الصَّلَاةِ with laxity, with no concentration, with no awareness, with no diyan, for the sake of formality, just routine, doing it. ذَيَّعَكَ اللَّهُ كَمَا ضَيَّعَتَنِي Then that person went for salat, for dua, to get close to Allah, he comes with badwa. فَتُلَفُّ كَمَا يُلَفُّ ثَوْبُ الْخَلِقِ And like how an old cloth, a rag, is thrown. That person's salat is thrown back on his face. Aswa'u nas sariqatan alladhi yasriqu salat. The worst of thieves, O Kamaqal, is that person who steals from his salat. So he's getting badwa, he's, he's the worst of thieves. Whereas a person who reads salat properly, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي الصَّلَاةِ مْخَشِئُونَ those people that read Salat, how it should be read, أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ These people are eligible for genital firdaus. هُمْ فِيَا خَالِدُونَ Forever and ever, no end. So such a Salat needs to be read, that we take benefit from the Salat. It is not just a formality. Thabit Banani Rahimullah used to cry so much that he was close to losing his eyes. So people told him, stop that. He said, what use is that eyes that don't cry for the fear of Allah? Somebody seen him in a qabr, reading salat, then quiet from the daughter. Was there any khas amal? She said, for the last 50 years, he never must touch his salat. And his dua all the time was, Ya Allah, if there was anybody given an opportunity on amal to do in akhirat, Ya Allah, let me read salat. Don't deprive me of salat in akhirat. So while they were dead, they wanted to read salat. And when I'm alive, do I have that fervor and shock? 
Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah, his daily habit routine was to read 300 nafil salat. 300 nawafil every day. And after he was lashed, at the age of 80, he used to read 150 rakat salat. Masrook rahimahullah, his wife used to look at him and cry. Because his feet used to become swollen standing so long in salah. So we are doing deen, but am I achieving, am I checking myself, am I be, I'm, I'm preparing for my year after? All these amal will be weighed in akhirah, it will be checked. And deen is opportunities, example a person makes khidmah of their parents, Man sarrahu ayyumadda lahu fi umrihi Anybody wants to love longer His life to be increased Wa yuzada fi rizqihi And he wants excessive risk He wants barakat in his wealth What must he do? Fal yabarra walidayhi Then he should be good to his parents Take his, take the, his parents duas Every parent I need to make such an effort on my mother that There's no Grief ever, my father. No grief ever. Separate effort on each one. Two below, glad tidings. And I must say, increase in life is one. In taqdeer, it's written if he's good to his parents, Allah will increase his life. He's supposed to live to 60, love to 80. In the ifaq, in obedience of Allah. Secondly, is that Allah will give him the life of a hundred, two hundred year old person. He'll do so much work that in the 60 years. People will be baffled, they'll be amazed, they'll be perplexed. How is it possible for somebody to have achieved so much in so little but span of time? That's not possible to do so much. But there's a secret, but Deen has all the secrets and all the raz. We've got all the keys to the treasures of Allah. But we need to activate those, those treasures. In dunya you have treasure hunters, their whole life is to find the treasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We need to find all these khazanas and treasures of Allah so that when the akhirat we've got the complete puzzle, the formula fits in. There was one contractor, construction worker and he was a manager so he was a, his retirement time had passed, he requested it, the boss didn't let him go, then one day he came and he insisted, the boss said no problem, I didn't let you go because you're such a good worker. You're such a good worker, I didn't want to let you go. So, I have one more request, one more last job. So, haphazardly, without, just to make the boss happy, he said, okay, I'll do it. So, he built the house, but he used the most inferior material, no workmanship. He used the labor, the materials, everything was done just for the sake of completing it. He rushed to do it and it was finished. The boss said, when it's done, tell me, I need to come inspect it. He called the boss, the boss came with a key and a, docu a set of documents and gave it to him. He said, what's this? He said, this is the house for your retirement. This is a house for your retirement. And he realized that was the biggest mistake of his life. Because every problem from the pipes bursting to water flooding the house when it rained, that house that should have been a bounty and a na'mat, and the gift became a means of stress forever. It should not be also. We read our salat, make our dhikr, make our tilawah, do all our mal for, for the sake of formality, for the sake of just doing it, for doing the numbers and completing it. But we should have the diyan and the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The amal for today, yesterday we done the amal of being particular about the six rakats after Maghrib Salah and the 20 rakats if Allah gives tawfiq. Today we are doing four rakats after Isha Salat. Normally people have a habit of doing two and then three. We should add four rakats. So do our four Isha, then two and another two, then our three. And then our two after that. Man salla arba rakaatin ba'd al Isha. Whoever is four rakats after Isha, kamith lihinna min laylati al Qadr. You will get the reward of making ibadat equivalent to that of Laylatul Qadr. So we just need to add an extra two rakats, it's not much, it's not difficult. 
Let's try to make it a ma'amul in all these a'mal that we have been told. I'm going to do it till I die. Let's make a niyat. And the dua for today is Sayyidul Istighfar. It's the crown of Tawbah, the climax of Tawbah, and we should make a habit to read it every day, morning and evening. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa na'abduk wa ala ahdik wa adik mastata'at. A'udhu bika min shadhi ma sana'atu abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhambi. فَغْفِرْ لِي فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ Whoever says this morning and evening فَمَاتَ مِنْ لَيْلَتِهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ And he passes that day or night then he's a jannati Another rewrite إِلَّا وَجَبَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Jannah becomes wajib on this person May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ